and welcome back to another episode. As you can see, there is a lot to do today. There's lots to plant out um, and just lots of jobs to do. We've just been so busy with work and, and with the garden shows and we actually got back from selling at the Kent Garden Show um, in the end of May bank holiday. Um, and that was really great. That was the best show that we've done so far. And I do just want to quickly mention <laughs> that I met the lovely Tina and Debbie at the show. They are huge fans of the blog and the videos. And I said that I would mention them in the next video. So hello. <laughs> um, it was really nice to meet you. It's always nice to meet fans um, at the shows that we go to. So yeah, it's been very hectic, especially because it was bank holiday and it would have been nice to have come up the allotment and to, to tick quite a few jobs off the list. But obviously we were at the garden show. So um, we're treating ourselves to a day or two off now <laughs> to get some jobs done because it's all just starting to pile up now. I mean, the greenhouse and the cold frames just get in chock a block now. And it's the 1st of June. Things need planting out. The, um, the risks of any major frost had passed and things just need need planting out so they can just crack on and grow but um because there's so much to do on the plot i've decided to concentrate on particular beds so today i will be concentrating on the bean slash other bed <laughs> um, because the broad beans need tying up and i'm also be harvesting a few broad beans from them as well they're going really well but they desperately need tying up because they're about four foot high now and it's a little bit windy here so I'll be tying the board beans up today and harvesting some as well I'll also be planting out some leeks because yet again they desperately need planting out so I'll be planting out the leeks I'll be planting out a courgette I'll also be directly sowing some climbing French beans and I'll be directly sowing some carrots as well because the last lot didn't come up. So yeah, I've decided to concentrate on particular beds. So that's what I'll be doing today. Um, in the next video, I will move on to the flower bed because it desperately needs weeding. And there's a few annuals like this cosmos that need planting out. And I also bought some foxgloves from the Kent Garden Show. So I, they need planting out. There's some peas to go in there, some Swiss chard, some scabious. Um, sunflowers need to go by the pond. <laughs> pond needs cleaning, shed needs painting, fruit cage needs a door and it needs tidying up. Strawberries need weeding. <sighs> the brassicas need putting out. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot to do. So I've, I've written lists in my allotment journal and I thought it'd just be best to concentrate on beds because it will make the list look a little bit smaller that way <laughs> so yeah that's what I'm going to do today so I think the best thing to do is just to get cracking because I think it's going to rain later today and if it's going to rain I really think that I'm just gonna carry on working because there's just too much to do and so little time so yes I am going to get cracking maybe even have time for a cup of tea later So it's time to put the leeks in. I actually managed to sow these on the 11th of February, so they've been in the greenhouse and in the cold frame for quite a while now. Really, you want to be planting them out 
into the allotment or garden when they're when they're about the thickness of a pencil which mine are really quite a thick pencil <laughs> but I mean it's fine it doesn't matter if things go in a little bit later hopefully they'll always catch up so um yes they're going in to the bean slash other bed because <laughs> like I said my allotment's quite small so I'm trying to squeeze things in so they're going in the bean bed and the idea is to sow two rows to here and then there's going to be sweet corn uh, climbing french beans and a pumpkin there and then I'm going to squeeze in a courgette next door there so yeah I'm squeezing quite a lot into this bed <laughs> but I mean it's all experimenting if it works it works if it doesn't then obviously next year I'll I won't squeeze as much in but there's going to be two rows of leeks here now this variety is called Musselburra they're the variety I always grow um, I tend to plant them out a little bit later um, in the second growing season when the potatoes come out and I will still be doing that but I thought I will put two small rows in here just to last me until the other ones are ready to harvest later on in the year so all you need to do is use a dibber well you don't have to use a dibber but I mean I know I go on about my dibber but it is such a handy tool so they need to go in roughly five inches deep they need to be nine inches apart and then the rows need to be roughly 15 inches apart and all you do is drop the leak into the hole and leave it like that so sometimes I give it a little twist just to get the roots down there nice now I sewed these in a pot um, and the roots were quite jumbled together so what I'd done before was I just let them soak for a little bit in a bucket of water just to get the roots apart so I didn't damage the roots when I got them out So they just go into the five inch deep holes and then what I will do is I will fill the, each hole with water and then just leave it. I'm not going to cover them up or anything. And then obviously over time when it rains and when you water them, soil will go into the hole it's the way that I've always done it, it's the way that my dad's done it and it's always worked and the reason for planting them that deep is that you get a nice white blanch on the end of the leek so they are very simple to plant out so altogether there's 12 there but like I said and what I do now is I will sow some more at home in the greenhouse and then when the potatoes come out I'll be planting three or four rows of leeks in that bed because they last over winter the the mussel borough variety is very hardy um, and they well they've always been good for us here down south so <laughs> so I'm growing them again so that's the leeks in now what I'm going to do is directly sow some climbing French beans Dinner. yep you can still see me <laughs> that's always good so the idea here is to do the three sisters technique where you have your sweet corn and then the climbing French beans will grow up the sweet corn and a pumpkin will grow quite happily amongst all the stalks um, it's been used for years and I thought I'd give it a go because like I said my allotments very small um, so I thought I'd give it a go just to see if it all works um, the sweet corn is growing happily at home it's not big enough to come out yet but it's the first of June and I thought I'd better directly sow my French beans otherwise it will be too late so again I'll be growing the Cobra variety I, I've grown this since I've had my allotment so for the past couple of years um, and I've just grown it up bamboo structure but obviously the sweet corn will act as the supports for the beans to grow up 
So I've marked it out. There's going to be 20 altogether. Um, so it's four rows and then and then five. Yeah, four by five. And it's best to grow your sweet corn in a block because they will help to pollinate each other. Um, it's better to do that than in a row because obviously, you know, it's more confined in the block. <laughs> So all I'm going to do with the climbing French beans, if I can get them out of the packet, is just create a small hole with a dibber. Now these only need to be about two inches deep. So just small holes. And then hopefully in a couple of weeks time the sweet corn will be ready to be planted out and then the french beans will hopefully be showing their heads by then and i'll plant the the crown prince pumpkin out as well in a couple of weeks time Move that weed. Now what I'll do is I'll put two French bean seeds in each hole because my dad had sown some runner beans and a couple of them, them didn't come up. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Where are we? So like I said, hopefully these will start to come up and then I can plant the sweet corn out, plant the pumpkin out. And hopefully we get a nice harvest of everything. I mean, it's, it's an experiment, so we'll see how it goes. But it'll be great if it works because obviously you just get more crops. So each hole is roughly two inches deep and they are roughly eight to nine inches apart. So after I've done these, I'll give it a good water. I'll give the leeks a good water. And then I think I get the courgette out because again that's dying to get out as well This will be the first time that I've grown a courgette but I think the year before last my dad grew a courgette in a tub and it produced quite a few nice little courgettes and they were delicious and when we were at um, a show last year I got a recipe for chocolate courgette cake and I, I brought a shop brought courgette but made it and it was delicious so this year I'm going to grow a courgette and um make some chocolate courgette cake hopefully if I get some courgettes from it now the idea was to plant two courgettes in this space but um, I only have one courgette <laughs> one didn't make it unfortunately so what I might do is just plant one here because the space is quite small anyway I think it might have been pushing it too much 
trying to squeeze two courgettes into this space. Now, they actually need 24 inches each way um, because obviously the leaves get quite big. Uh, so what I'd do is I'll plant one here and if I go to a garden centre and I see a courgette then I might plant one there. Um, if I don't see one in the garden centre then I won't but we'll see, we'll see. Obviously I don't really know how big they grow entirely. Again it's all going to be an experiment but you have to try new things don't you? Otherwise you know What's the point? <laughs> so I'm going to be putting this courgette about here. So I'm going to dig quite a big hole because I went over to my dad's plot and I got some of his homemade compost. So I'm going to put some of that into the bottom. I really need a compost bin. I'm hopefully going to build one to put in the flower bed. But again, it's just finding time to do it. So the variety of courgette that I'm growing is called Black Beauty. And I sowed it on the 13th of March. And it's been acclimatised outside. So let's put some more of that lovely homemade compost in the bottom. And then I'm just going to backfill it. I can't wait to see what this will do now that it's out because there's a few flowers which are trying to grow on it. So hopefully we get some nice weather now and it will just speed away. So I'm just going to put that label back there in case that I do get another one to go there. But we'll see how this one grows. If I find one in the garden centre then I won't leave it there by itself, <laughs> but we'll see. So the only thing that needs to be done to this bed now is obviously to plant the sweet corn out and the, and the crown prince pumpkin when it's ready in a couple of weeks time. I'm going to tie back the broad beans today and I'm going to sow some more carrots, but then that's this bed practically done. It's just the brassica bed that's a bit empty, but we'll focus on that another day because all the red cabbages and the flower sprouts and the, um, the purple sprouting broccoli, they're ready to come out, but I just need to get rid of that cold frame and dig that area over. But it's all starting to come together now and the red onions look really good. I'm really pleased with them so far. But yes, tie the broad beans up and sow some more carrots. I'll give this little courgette a quick water first though. Not too much because I think it's going to rain later. Right. I decided to sow some more carrots simply because it's been about four or five weeks since I sowed the first lot and there was a complete and utter no-show of any seedlings growing so um I thought I might as well just try again <laughs> because it's been four or five weeks so I don't think they've come up now so I'm trying a different variety this one's called romance f1 hybrid um i've just done exactly the same as i usually do with my when i sew my carrots there the rows are 12 inches apart and i've just created two 
drills using a bamboo cane and they're only about 13 millimeter deep so I'm just sewing these now I'm not sure why the last ones didn't show maybe it was too cold I didn't manage to put the cross hoop over them at all like I said I would so I reckon they just rotted in the ground or the slugs got them so never mind I shall try again so that's that done so I'm just going to cover the trenches back up I'm not going to water these in because the soil's quite damp and it's forecast for rain later today. I don't want these seeds to rot. So I'll um, cover them up and then just leave them. I won't water them. But what I have done is I have supported my broad bean, <laughs> finally. All I've done is put six bamboo canes in around the edge and then tied some twine around just to keep them up because quite a few of them are bending over. It's a little bit windy here, but yeah, hopefully they'll be good now. And they are taller than they were, what they were last year, which is great because they were quite short last year. And there's no signs of black fly on them, which is even better because last year I had such a massive black fly problem. And there's some broad beans ready for harvesting. So I'm just going to cover the rest of these carrots up and then I'm going to harvest some broad beans and then that's this bed pretty much done. I can't believe that I'm picking broad beans already. I mean, I sowed these broad beans back in November. When was it? 28th of November, I actually sowed these broad beans. Um, and they are the Aqua Dulce Claudia variety. They're very hardy. Um, so they're perfect for growing over winter. Um, I did the same last year, but last year the broad beans didn't grow very well at all. Um, and they got a really bad case of black fly um, around this time actually which just stunted their growth and they didn't do well at all and I don't think I harvested many broad beans that year they also didn't grow very tall um, these ones are about four foot high um, and the flowers just keep on coming which is great and I noticed these broad beans um, a few weeks ago now <laughs> um, so I made a note to pick some because you actually really want to pick them when they're three four inches long um, because obviously the the bigger they get the tougher they are and they're meant to be really tasty when they're when they're three to four inches long and there's this one stalk here in particular that has loads on so I'm going to pick these ones for dinner. Now it's best to use two hands when you're picking broad beans, just in case you rip a whole stalk off. For instance, this one here is ready to pick, but there's also one growing right next to it, which is still quite small. So you don't want to damage them. So I'm just going to pick a nice little handful. Oh, there's one in there just for dinner tonight because there's a few I can see that are very nearly ready but I'm going to leave them and just pick these ones I think that's about it which is fine because it's only me and my dad that like board beans anyway <laughs> but that's going to be perfect the first board bean harvest of the year a lovely little handful which is just right and hopefully there will be plenty more broad beans coming up in the year what I'll have to do is keep an eye on the black fly if the black fly does start to come then just pinch off the tips 
And really you can start to pin start pinching off the tips now to prevent the black fly. But there's still loads of flowers forming, so I'm gonna keep an eye on that this year. Try my hardest to beat the black fly. But they look completely healthy. And now that they're supported, they won't be flocking everywhere. So that's it. That bean slash other bed is nearly finished now. It's just the sweet corn and the the crown prince squash to go in there. Like I said, they're still in the greenhouse and they're still growing. They're not quite ready to come out yet. A couple of weeks time and they'll be ready, I think. Hopefully then the French beans will be up and everything will be away. So I think I'm going to leave this video at that because it's probably too long as it is. But um, the next video will be all about tackling the flower bed because it needs weeding and there's lots of annuals to be planted out. So these are on the menu for dinner tonight. I can't wait, but there's lots of other jobs that I need to be doing on the allotment. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.